Friday, November 26th, the day after Thanksgiving, and I hope all of you out there had a wonderful Thanksgiving, filled with family and good food and friends, and if you traveled, I hope you traveled safely and you got there in a reasonable amount of time. But I'm talking today about a crisis that has been going on in this country for over 20 years, and that's dealing with opioids. Opioid deaths in this country have exceeded well over a million people in that time frame. And that's come from illegal drugs, heroin, and prescription drugs. And a court in Ohio, in a civil case brought against CVS and Walmart and Walgreens, has found them legally responsible for the deaths and their involvement in this nationwide epidemic. Now, I find it extremely difficult to look at the pharmacies in the way that this jury did. What is a pharmacist supposed to do if somebody comes into his store with a legal prescription written by a reputable doctor? Is he supposed to not fulfill that prescription? Is he supposed to counsel every person that comes into the store with a prescription? I think not. I don't think so. I don't think that the pharmacists have the responsibility to change the prescription, to tell the person that they're not going to give them the drug. All drugs that you buy always have disclaimers on the label. If you're pregnant, you shouldn't use them. If you have high blood pressure, you shouldn't use them. Anything. If your skin itches, you're not supposed to use this particular drug. So we can't expect the pharmacists to step up to the plate and stop this epidemic, this opioid epidemic, because it's not their job. Their job is to fill prescriptions. Their job is to give advice on certain things, to take certain over-the-counter medications. What do I take for a headache? What do I take for this rash? Do you have anything? Where can I find the vitamin pills? You know, this has gotten out of hand. Now, we know that the United States is a litigious society, and so they'll sue everybody, and maybe they should sue everybody. But that puts a great burden on the rest of the population because we expect juries to act with a certain amount of intelligence. And I'm not so sure that the jury in this case against Walmart and CVS and Walgreens acted intentionally, intelligently. Maybe they were upset because everybody knows somebody that has had a drug problem. And the drug problem is carried throughout the family. You have cases where addicts, opioid addicts, they didn't die. They're still alive. But got little kids, and they have no way of taking care of these kids properly because they're addicted. So this addiction goes beyond the death of the opioid victims. This goes all the way through the family chain of these people. And to dump the solution on the pharmacist, and in Ohio, these, the victors in this suit are expecting to get a billion dollars from each of these pharmacies. Now, I'm not saying the pharmacies can't afford it, but I am saying that I don't believe that they are 100%, 100% the perpetrator of the crime. I think this goes deeper, way deeper than the pharmacists. We have plenty of doctors who are writing these just prescriptions indiscriminately. And then we, of course, got a bunch of people in what we'll call the black market drug industry 
who come by these drugs in some way, shape, or form and sell them on the street corners, perhaps. You know? So it's unfair in my mind to single out pharmacies. And this is only in two counties in Ohio. If this thing catches on, it will spread through the whole United States. Pharmacists will be sued. And imagine a guy who happens to be a drugstore owner, you know, an individual drugstore. Remember, there used to be individual drugstores. We probably don't even remember that. But what happens if a guy is an individual drugstore and he gets sued? He'll be out of business. And he's not turning over a billion dollars. And they didn't sue anybody that didn't have billions of dollars. So this suit, while has brought national attention to the opioid crisis beyond what we are seeing now with all these other criminal trials that have been going on with Rittenhouse and Ahmed Arbery and all of those cases that have captured the imagination of the American public. But this opioid crisis, which is valid, no question about it that there is this crisis, but it goes beyond the drugstores. It goes beyond the pharmacies. It goes beyond these major corporations. This is a crisis because physicians didn't necessarily pay attention to the needs of their patients. If the patient continually needed this drug, how could they continue to get a prescription from a, an upstanding physician? So this is a drop in the bucket in the opioid crisis, even though it represents millions and billions of dollars. It's just a drop in the bucket in the size of this crisis because this little corner of Ohio, which probably represents a very small amount of the deaths caused by the crisis, has set a tone that I am sure there will be other lawyers and other patients running to sue large pharmaceutical companies. And several pharmaceutical companies like Purdue, who were a known producer of the opioid, declared bankruptcy so they could avoid paying the fines and everything that they should be paying. So this is just another factor in the daily life of the United States. And it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing when people become addicted to anything. So I don't know where this is going to go, but we should keep an eye out because I don't know that the pharmacies are really more than minusculely responsible for this opioid crisis. That's all I have to say this morning, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.